When you read the story of Abraham's spiritual journey, please don't miss the fact that he's not journeying alone. Yahweh, of course, is with him at every step of the way. But there's one more person, his wife. When his name is changed from Abram, which means exalted father, to Abraham, meaning father of a multitude, his wife's name is also changed from Sarai, which simply means princess, to Sarah, which means basically the same, but interestingly, the same Hebrew letter, He, is added, as in the case of Abram. So Abram becomes Abraham, Sarai becomes Sarah. It's quite possible that in both cases, the addition of the letter He comes from God's name Yahweh, in which the letter He appears twice, suggesting probably that both Abraham and Sarah belong to Yahweh. In any case, Sarah is included in the so-called Abrahamic covenant, and she plays a key role. Before her name change, Sarai first appears as a barren wife that creates troubles to her husband with her dazzling beauty. Then she seems to mess up even God's plans by providing her husband with a complimentary wife. When her name is changed, Sarah is reconfirmed as Abraham's partner in God's covenant. Genesis 17, verse 16. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples shall be from her. Even after this moment, in spite of her old age, she is now 90 years old. She still gets the attention of foreigners. Then she not only conceives and gives birth, but also breastfeeds the heir of God's covenant blessings. Well, obviously someone is performing miracles here. But before Sarah leaves the stage, she creates trouble again. She wants to make sure Isaac's status is not jeopardized, so she wants Ishmael out. Pretty controversial behavior, isn't it? Well, just like Abraham's. With all this, when she dies at 127, Abraham makes sure Sarah will rest in an honorable tomb until the day of resurrection. Shalom.